This is show 39 of the Cloth Diaper Podcast with Valerie from Babby and Blends. The Cloth Diaper Podcast is a somewhat regular show dedicated to everything cloth diapering. We tell stories from cloth diapering parents, retailers, and brands around the world about their cloth diaper journey and experience. Good morning or good day or whenever you're listening. I guess you could be listening to a podcast at any time of the day. My name is Bailey. I am the host of the Cloth Diaper Podcast and a mom of two. As a Cloth Diaper blogger, I decided that it was time we started sharing stories about Cloth Diaper brands and parenting in another way. I Too often I find that the Cloth Diaper rhetoric or the Cloth Diaper story is one-sided. It's about one person's perspective or one person's experience And if that person happens to have power, that is the only story that's told. And so I started a podcast in the attempts to maybe share more stories and more perspectives. I'm not quite sure I really succeeded at this. I still feel like I still share one specific, oh, that's not a right word, one like narrative. And I would love to share more narratives. Now that it is the end of January, I am opening it up to let you know that I will be taking interview booking requests for February, March, and April for the Cloth Diaper Podcast. Interviewing for the Cloth Diaper Podcast is, that's like a scary term, but it's really not. All it is is a half hour phone call on Zoom. We do it over the computer. It's super simple. I have like a list of general questions and we just chat about how you cloth diaper, about your cloth diaper experience and how to make it work for you. I have a lot of different times available. If those times don't work, I am more than willing to work with you to find a time that does. And I know that you think maybe if you're listening, well, my story is not really important. It's not really special. Everybody's story is important. Everybody's story is something special. And podcasting is a really great way to share it without this overwhelming sense of, um, I'm not a good writer. And if you, if English is your second language, I still would love you have on the show. Uh, English as a second language is not a, like, it's not a bad thing. It's actually something that makes the conversation really well because we slow down and we try to figure out what the right terminology and thinking is. So if you are an avid listener and you've been thinking about sharing your story, 2020 is the time to do it. I would love to get you in my inbox. Send me an email, bailey at clothdiaperpodcast.com, and I'll shoot you a link to sign up as well as the information. And let's make 2020 a great Cloth Diaper Podcast year. Uh, that little intro aside, I am going to introduce introduce. I'm going to roll the interview with Valerie from Baby and Blends. Baby and Blends. Baby and there blends. you go. Baby and Blends. Yeah, and you're sure. a full time working mom of two with a cloth diaper company on the side. That is right. So actually, I I do work full time. Obviously, aside from you know, parenting, which everyone knows to be a full-time job on, on its own. Um, I do like consulting for um, entrepreneurs or just startups. Um, so it's kind of ironic and that before baby ends, I was giving other people advice on how to run a company and had never done it myself. So <laughs> here I am. Here I am coaching myself and taking my own advice and kind of seeing it from the other side and, um, you know, it's, it's been a bit of an experiment, but I think it's definitely helped me, at least in my in my full time role, is just getting that perspective from the other side. Um, but yeah, I think the the finance part is you know, kind of funny when people think about finance or accounting. It's like you think of conservative, stuffy uh, profession, and you know if you know me or meet me, people are like, "How are you? How is it the case that you do that?" Because um, then. <laughs> very laid back and go with the flow. So it's kind of a conundrum, but, um, but yeah, it's, it, it, it all keeps me busy. And, um, and You're very busy. Fun, so. Yeah. So <laughs> what even if we like rewinded it, why did you even start cloth diapering with your, with your children? Did you start with your first do what's your cloth diaper story from the get go? Yeah. So I think, Maybe I was brainwashed as a as a child. My parents, um, you know, cloth diapered me, and 
So I, you know, I, I knew it to be an option, which I think a lot of people just don't even consider it unless they know somebody who's doing it. It's just not something that doesn't even come to mind. So at least I had that background where I knew it was something to do. And I never um, really even considered doing disposables, which I guess is. I feel you in there. Cause I like my parents only cloth diapered and it was just kind of like, I didn't even really think about disposable diapering. We're definitely not the only ones out there, Valerie. I know. It. <laughs> There's <laughs> I a know. couple of us it's just raised up. Very there. lonely. Um, At least so, in, a, in the United States, it's very lonely. Um, you know, I <laughs> have so many peers that are um, my friends that are you know, my age and having babies. And it's just like nobody else does it and even with my daughter's daycare like they've never they looked at me like I was crazy when I asked if they would use you know if I could use the cloth diapers with her when she was with you know with them and under their care so they were like well I guess we're gonna have to research this and see if we can and um you know sure enough they could and they're doing it now but she's the only child in the entire daycare that uses <laughs> cloth diapers so <laughs> Oh, it's it's a lonely a lonely world and cloth diapering is here, uh, yeah, especially in the southeast. But the United States in general, I think, has just been very slow to catch on to it. Yes, it's been very slow, and we're. I think a lot of people I've talked with this year have really been saying though there is a big uptake worldwide. So hopefully, maybe trend will come back, right? <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna like have a full full circle scenario because this is how it was done in the beginning of time and I think this was the kind of environmental crisis like we're being pushed to make these changes and people are just so much more conscious of you know what they're doing in their day-to-day lives and how they could maybe minimize their impact on the environment um I think you know there's that natural inclination for people to to go towards cloth diapers or what have you. Um, but I think eventually it's going to be the case that we are literally forced into um, making these changes because, I mean, yeah, it's, it's definitely something that needs to, needs to change or we're going to start having bigger issues um, that we're facing yeah. globally. So. So from being your own cloth diaper parent to starting a business, why did you decide to start a cloth diaper business? What what made you consider opening Baby and Blends or Baby and Blends? Sorry. And um, <laughs> what is Baby and Blends? So I'll give you the backstory, then you'll you'll it'll stick in your mind better, I think. OK. Uh, at least in terms of the pronunciation. Uh, so my daughter, Vivian, um, when she was born, her brother is only, I guess, like two at the time. So he's kind of trying to figure out the simple English language. Um, but we referred to her as baby until she was born. And he kind of took the two, Vivian and baby, and made his own word. Oh. And it's really stuck. So everybody, you know, we all call her baby. And um, I don't really think we ever referred to her to her other um, actual name. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the pronunciation stumble there is mostly just like my, um, I call it my Canadian dialect. I went to school in Missouri for a while and I have a really hard time with hard A's. Uh, so I tend to like soften them all the time, like pasta. Make, I like it. It gives it a make. little. Um, yeah. So, but now that I know I'll work on it, baby in. Yeah. It's a little more <laughs> harsh. That is a super cute story. And that's why you have baby in blends. Hey, like that's a good fun name. Story. Yeah, it's uh, something she could tell all of her friends when she's older. Like, I have my own closet diapers named after me. So, you know, she's going to make make a lot of friends that way, I feel like. <laughs> but yeah, maybe. So a lot of people start a cloth diaper brand or business because the cloth diapers out there didn't work for them. Is that kind of where you came or did you have a different dream here? Uh. Yeah, so I think that is definitely part of it, other than just the kind of the personal, like, you know, inclination I have to just push the movement. I feel like, um, you know, part of that is the reason that people don't take on to the closet diaper so much is because it's, you know, they come across as very complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was kind of my first thing was like, just make something very simple. Like, I, 
I don't think cloth diapers are ever going to be revolutionized. Like a diaper, you know, is a diaper. It just needs to do its job and last. And, um, you know, I think when we try to reinvent the wheel, it just complicates it and maybe turns people off to using them, um, especially when whenever the addition that's made, like, I guess I, when I think of cloth diapers and things that have been done um i think of like the gussets and the uh, velcro and all these things that kind of like deteriorate or makes them impossible to clean um or you know like your microfibers that turn up thinking no matter how many times you wash them and they're just all of these things that have been done supposedly to make them better are actually kind of making them worse and adding costs so um so yeah, I think that was like number one thing. It's just keep it very simple, um, both for people to use, but also, um, you know, make something that lasts. And um, I think, yeah, it's just a kind of a combination of all the things that I like in cloth diapers and didn't like in cloth diapers. And I try to put that all into one. Um, so yeah, I think that was kind of the, the inspiration for how I went about it about it um, in a slightly different way but so you've got you know, here like I said, so what you've got is um baby and blend sells a a cover correct like an all-in-two cover with a snap-in insert is that what i'm seeing on your instagram yeah that's right awesome that is a nice Sorry. simple style diaper not much fuss to it stays in place yeah yeah so i think the only um yeah the only like thing you admitted was like the, the fact that it's waterproof so hmm. um you know you have the ability to kind of use it multiple times between laundering so it's kind of it's an extra little uh benefit if you're trying to keep things you know simple is that you know you're not washing it every time and trying to find some proprietary insert that you, you lost in your laundry and so your cover is <laughs> worthless until you find it um, uh, it's just yeah, a general yeah. snap you can mix and match if you wanted to but you sell uh bamboo cotton blend and the hemp blend is that what i'm reading here insert yeah, that's right so there are five layers um they are actually uh gusseted but um you know you're able basically you're not forced into buying both of them you could just do the cover and use your own mm-hmm. insert so uh, i think i referred to it as a like an open source uh, open source diaper so you can incorporate it with your other other diapers and you're not um you know kind of pigeonholed into using you know the insert that i have if you have some preference of another one so open source um, diaper that's a cute open source there you go <laughs> yeah, yeah mix them back <laughs> is there a snap at the front or is there a snap at the back there's a snap in the back. So, um, I think, yeah. Just curious. I'm just looking at a picture online and I'm just like, what does this look like? Um, did you find that the gussets on the insert help keep things together? Uh, why did you decide to do that? I've seen that as kind of a popular trend right now with some other brands as well. Um, yeah. So the, the reason for the gusset on the inside, so I struggled with the gusset on the outside because I know, it works and it's worked for my children. I know a lot of people say that it, you know, it works for them, but, um, you know, just in keeping with the simple, uh, nature of it, I wanted to, I decided not to go with that because I, you know, I think everyone's found themselves in the situation where you're, uh, trying to like get in all the nooks and crannies and clean it out before you, launder launder it and it's like you know you basically have to wear like a hazmat suit to to get it clean and it's just like kind of again like over complicating something um that doesn't necessarily add a ton of value so i think the gusset for the the insert i mean it allows for it to stay snug to the skin and um the cover around it is basically essentially the same as having a normal insert with a Gusseted cover, but you're not finding yourself, you know, with the bug sprayer, um, you know, spraying out all the nooks and crannies of the of the cover. So um, that was that was the thought process, and you know, it it does work just in the same way. You're just 
not doing all the extra cleaning on the tail end of it. So, okay. Well, what's your inspiration? Are you the one picking them out? How do you decide what print to choose for your company and your blend? Yeah. Yeah. So on this, on the superficial aesthetic, um, part of it, you know, obviously that, is something that people consider and, you know you like to say that you just use the diaper because it's the one that works the best but um, yeah, people we buy people the pretty pay a lot of attention to the print right? <laughs> yeah. like, you know, that's just the truth of the matter so um you know i think it's just another it's another option um it's just like clothing like i think that's something that is kind of stalling the cloth diaper industry is that there's not I mean, there are a lot of options, but it's not like clothing where you have, you know, thousands of different styles and prints and that sort of thing that you could choose from. So I went pretty wild with the the prints. Um, it is like an artist that I actually um, really like uh, before, you know, I ever considered doing cloth diaper business. So um, I was just like, oh, wow, that would, you know, that would look great on a, on a cloth diaper. Like I would wear that as a shirt. So I did not look good. <laughs> you know, on the cloth diaper. Um, so yeah, so I picked them out, but it's also, you know, some, an artist that I've, I've loved for a really long time. So, um, yeah, I've actually like reached out to her and got in contact with her and I told her what I was doing. I was like, before I did that, I was really struggling with it because I was like, is she going to be offended if she finds out that somebody put her beautiful art on something that, you know, babies are <laughs> pooping in so those the things yeah, we do to ourselves hey right like, we get into those uh we get into that like that vicious cycle of like worrying about but it usually works out in the end hey yeah no yeah, she was uh, she was very flattered she was um like, thought it was really cool that you know seeing her art was gonna be all these cute little babies all, all over the place so <laughs> worked out well <laughs> So how has starting your business come off running? What have been some of your challenges? So yeah, the, the biggest challenge I think is just being a, a small fish in a big sea. I think in yeah. terms of like manufacturing, um, you know, you just don't have all, all of the options that some of the bigger players have. And, um, you know, obviously from like a cost perspective, like you think of economies of scale, just not being able to produce enough to, you know, get the best cost. So, you know, I've had to like kind of think about ways to go about it a bit differently than I originally intended. But, um, but no, I, I, and the reason for that is that I just found a manufacturer that was willing to work with me. So that was the biggest thing is just finding somebody yeah. that would work with a, that a small fish and a resonating accomplish. um a resonating theme with small businesses is trying to find that manufacturer to work with you them. mentioned here on your website as well as on your instagram that you're a low carbon cloth diaper cloth diaper crusader what does that <laughs> uh what does that mean to you to be a low carbon or a you've used a couple other words here on your website about um the earth and cloth diapering like what does that mean to you in the entire process yeah, so low carbon, it, obviously, cloth diapering is going to be less, less wasteful and less um, of a burden on the environment than it's disposable any day. So that's like just one part of it. But um, I think the bigger message I'm trying to convey is what I talked about and just being, you know, simple and not overcomplicating something that doesn't need to be. Um, I'm just making, you know, making very simple diaper that anyone could pick up and figure out how to use and it's not going to have you know all these special like you know gimmicky things that are added to it um just to try to like differentiate yourself in the market um it's just it's just basic it's simple and it works and that's where and that's what i mean by the low carbon um just not not uh over complicating something that doesn't need to be so oh, hey. that's where that came from. <laughs> I, I'm always curious to hear people's stories on, um, yeah, on what they're doing. It is just a cloth diaper cover. And I know a lot of people probably listening are anxious about covers. There's like this general weird 
mass love of the, the pocket diaper. Why might this be equally as useful as a pocket diaper, Valerie? If somebody has only ever used pocket diapers, what, what, would the transition pocket, be easy? Yeah, I think so. So, I, And I know that to be the case because I've found myself uh, in a situation where it's in the middle of the night and I'm changing a diaper and I uh, haven't pre-stuffed my pockets. Um, shame on me for not doing that, but I have to basically just lay the liner in there and make it work because I have a flail- flailing baby on the changing table. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's no, you know, no more complicated than a pocket other than you're not having to stuff it. You just okay. snap it and go. So, um, And it's all kind of a yeah, I really it's all kind of smooth. There's not a lot, like, what about, I think that people might think there's like a fear of the poop, but the poop is going to be very similar removal. Hey, like because of the gussets, it's kind of going to hold it all together. Just like a pocket does. Hey, on the insert. Um, no, maybe. Yes. I don't know how a a pocket, um, would make it any different, um, I guess I don't understand the question. (laughs) Well, (laughs) that's fair. So um, a lot of times people prefer pocket diapers because they think that poop removal is easier. Um, But on the baby and blends, because it's like a snap in insert is, is it, is it going to be more challenging? Do you find it to be a simple process? I, me looking at it as like somebody who's tried a lot of diapers, I think the gussets running down the side as well as just the general shape, you're not actually going to have as big of a gross yucky mess as people think they are. Um, Mm -hmm. But maybe, maybe you have a different take on that. Yeah. So make more sense. I think like the, yeah, so the inserts, um, I I mean, they're gusseted, but they're flat and I mean, they're basically filling out the entire cover. So um, it's, it doesn't really resemble anything different than a cover when you're, you know, in terms of cleaning, like you're lifting it, spraying it and throwing it in the, in the wash. So I don't think it's any more complicated um, than cleaning out a pocket diaper. Um, And, you know, obviously the fact that it's a a waterproof cover and you want to be able to use it a couple of times, like that was the reasoning for making the insert really large so that you know when you do have the poop like it's not coming in contact with the cover you could take out the insert and then reuse the cover um because it hasn't been soiled so um so yeah i don't i don't see it as any more complicated or uh, even less complicated than a, a pocket a diaper just because it is a flat insert and um i think know, that's just like different the story we tell ourselves is kind of scenarios where we think that a pocket diaper solves a lot of problems, but it doesn't always. And sometimes the story we're telling ourselves is not necessarily the real life example. Yeah. Yeah. So I always uh, thought the pocket diaper was an invention. Uh, I'd say invention. Maybe that's like too generous of a yeah. term, but it's just, it's basically so that you could use microfiber with them and because microfiber can't touch skin, you had to come up with a way to Yeah, you know, I guess it. so. So that's that an interesting whole- concept. A lot of people use pockets nowadays. Well, yeah, because microfiber and, and that's an interesting origin story that I would have to agree, but I've never actually taken a moment to thought about thought about that's not a right word. I don't know uh, if I read that somewhere or that's my own plan theory. But, but I, I would say a lot of people use them today for stay dry, for the stay dry experience. So this idea of wetness sensitivity is kind of uh, uh, grappling the world. That's not the right mm-hmm. word either. But um, a lot of fear <laughs> around wetness. I tend to think that wetness sensitivity, like a lot of kids will outgrow it and Babies are just cranky because I had a really cranky baby. So I don't, um, he was cranky in a disposable and he was cranky in a cloth diaper. So I'm like, I don't think it was pee, but um, yeah, a lot of people try the wetness, but you can add, if people wanted to have um, a stay dry experience, you can add a wool liner or a fleece liner to a baby and blend diaper. Pretty simple, straightforward. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's really the intention is that you could use, whatever 
whatever works best for you with the cover. Um, Does your cover fit over a fitted diaper? Yeah, so I've had that question as well. And so, I've, and I wasn't sure of the answer. So I basically, I think I gave somebody the dimensions. I'm like, I don't know. Will this will it work? And like you tell me because I'm I'm not very familiar with the whole fitted uh, concept. So um, it turns out that they do. So it also works with fitted. It does look like it has a little bit of a short rise. Does it? Is it more of a smaller fitting diaper, or do you find it is more of a larger? fitting one size um so it it fits on a newborn because i've trialed that one but also i'm using them with our uh, almost three-year-old who weighs you know 40 pounds so he's a big one okay um so and he you know he's potty trained but he we put him in we had to start putting him in pull-ups overnight because he's just so big that you know cloth diaper wasn't working so i've started using using them um in the baby and they fit on him so oh, um, well there I you originally, go. yeah sometimes like, looks are deceiving. <laughs> i recently also i had another brand show up at my doorstep the other day and i sent it to my tester and i was also like i think this isn't really going to fit her very well and she came back and she was like, no, it fits amazing. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Sometimes looks are deceiving. So you've got a full yeah. weight range here with Baby and That's awesome. Why should someone try Baby and Blends? Valerie, what makes your brand special or answers a need that maybe some of our listeners are looking for? Um, yeah, again, I think it's, it's just the fact that, you know, you could use it, use it easily. It's nothing nothing crazy about it you're not going to get it and like have an instruction manual on how to clean it or um you know how to adjust it it's just very straightforward uh something that you could incorporate in your stash and obviously like the the prints are a little um different than the typical ones that you see so um if that's something that catches your eye like and turns you on the cloth diapering like that was kind of my um, uh, thought process on that but um but yeah I think really it's again nothing revolutionary about Babian versus another um, <laughs> this is not a very good you know. PR spiel but Valerie <laughs> yeah I know. Um, it's, it's, well, that's how I think about it it's um it's basically like clothing like you should be able to buy a shirt from one store and a pair of pants from another store and so yeah, that's what okay. I mean by open source or open source diapering. And I think um, you know, one of the things that kind of following cloth diapering cloth diapering is that, you know, there is all of this like stuff that's put out there that people hear, like, you know, one diaper is better than the other and so they're doing all this research to try to figure out what's best. But I think really you know, it should be more of a collaborative a process where people can buy a cloth diaper from one company because they like the print or whatever and buy another one from another company and they all kind of work together um yeah so, yeah yeah that's, that's true hey um that is um people like yeah cloth diapers don't really need to compete with each other they just need to if we get yeah. too caught up in that in that little bit of that battle um, who are we actually, yeah, who do we actually need to fight per se, if we were to fight somebody, um, you're based in the United States, your diapers sell your, do you ship everywhere? Where in the United States are you? Uh, so I'm in Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta Georgia. Yeah. Somewhere and, warm. <laughs> um, yeah, well not anymore. It's, uh, you know, it used to be, it used to be the case, but now we're like having, winter in september are you really having never really but uh i understand that winter feels different okay so baby and blend ships out of atlanta georgia so you're just on the east coast there and right now people if they wanted to order your diapers they can order them directly from you they will no longer be pre-orders at that time but um they will all be shipping november the end of november so okay 
So diapers will be in stock at Baby and Blends to be purchased when this podcast releases. By babyandblends.com. Baby and Blends. But we can also, you also <laughs> have a Facebook Baby and Blends. You also have an Instagram Baby and Blends. So if people are looking for, yep. to check out your print or style, Baby and Blends sounds like a diaper that could easily just blend into your current stash. All right. Thank you so much for joining me for this conversation with Valerie from Baby and Blends. I know I got that wrong at the beginning of the intro. Such a faux pas on my behalf. Language dic- tic- dictation? Not my forte, even though I have a podcast. Um, I guess it's not a podcast in dictation and how to properly pronounce words. Thank you for joining me. If you don't already, please make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to you the Cloth Hyper podcast. Subscriptions are super important, even though it's totally arbitrary. Sometimes guests want to know how big my show is, and I know there's over 500 of you who pop in to listen, so... Be sure to hit that subscription button. And if you enjoy what you're hearing, leave a review and come find us. A Cloth Diaper Podcast is on Facebook and Instagram. On Facebook and Instagram, you can learn more about how to cloth diaper, cloth diapering tips, and when my new How to Cloth Diaper book will be releasing. The Cloth Diaper Podcast is an independent podcast run just by me. Thanks for listening. Bye.